you are free to do that. Okay. So, so yeah, in today's class, we're going to be looking at Windows uh, clustering, right? I'm going to explain this. It's good that you have an understanding of this. You all see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so most of these things are extracts that I just I got from the internet, but um, I'll be I'll explain this to you uh, really well. So a cluster is a group of independent computer systems, right, or independent computers referred to as nodes, right, uh, working together as a unified computing resource. So a cluster provides a single name for clients to use and a single administrative interface and it guarantees that data is consistent across all nodes. So not, <clears throat> not to be talking of too much grammar, this is, this, is what, uh, this is what a cluster is all about. So in our, in our system today, we have three computers. We have computer one, our DC, we have computer two, our pro, we have computer three, right? So now all of these computers, they have their storage. So this one has a storage here, three, uh, two drives. This one has a storage. This one also has a storage, right? So now if we are working, what we have done so far is we have created a file share here. We have created a file share here. Saying that anybody log into any of these two, these two nodes can access that file share. Uh, this one is prod, and this one is our DC, right? Anybody log into this com any of these computers in the network can access that file share. And all of these computers here, they are in our Kiawe Tech domain, right? They're in our Kiawe Tech domain, meaning they communicate with, with each other. They're in the Kiawe Tech domain. So now, what are some of the disadvantages of this? Let me take, for instance, we install SQL. Right, we install SQL in this computer. There is SQL here in our prod, SQL. Now we also have SQL here. We have installed SQL there and we have here as well. Right, if something happens, right, in this our SQL, we have uh, applications that are connecting to these our servers. We have applications that are connecting here. So now, what will happen if this server, our prod server goes down? What will happen if it goes down? Meaning that it will go down with the data basics because we don't have any high availability solution here, then everything here will go down with the data basics, right? So what is clustering, right? What is clustering? So clustering now is we want to combine these two computers to work as one. So we'll use Microsoft, a Microsoft technology to link these two computers now to look themselves as one so once we link these two computers what will happen is we'll create an object it will be like a a, a, a a visual computer that will have now a name we'll have a name right a name and an ip address as well just like a just like a computer so this is what will happen we'll create a cluster with the microsoft technology that will link this all of this like this, to be looked at as a single computer. So all of this now will be looked as, oh crap. So all of this, these two servers now, we have created this, we have used this technology to combine the two nodes, right? Because we call them now nodes. We call these ones now nodes in a cluster. So the two of them are combined and they will give us now a logical, name and an IP address, we'll call this one our SQL cluster. We'll call this one SQL cluster, SQL cluster. And we'll give it an IP address 192.168.0.7, right? So now, if applications, rather than applications connecting directly to this database, as was the case earlier, Applications now will do what? They will connect but to this data, to this cluster. They will use now this logical name, the IP address and the cluster name to connect. So if something happens now with this, our prod, with this node, right? Applications now will see now that, okay, this one is still here. They will still, even though they are connected here, this guy will route them to this one. And if something happens with this, our node here, 
everything is gonna be, we'll be able to fill over these resources to this node, meaning that prod is down, but still our databases are still up because they are able to fail over to our DRM. So that is where the concept of clustering comes in place. To create that sort of communication between these two computers in such a way that if one goes down, we'll have another one right up. So in clustering, there are two, there are two clustering uh, setups that we'll do in this class. We'll do the one that we're doing now for always on, and we'll talk about this when we're installing always on, right? Which is always on cluster. Both of these nodes, they have their separate storages. They have their drive, drive C, drive D, and whatsoever. But there is another clustering technique or technology, which is called traditional failover clustering, where these nodes, all node one, node two, or your product, or your DRO, they have a single storage and they are sharing the storage. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So your understanding is a cluster, like I said, is a group of independent computers your prod and your DRO, now known as node. So node one and node two, they are independent computers uh, that they are working together now as a unified computer, right? Meaning if something happens here, this one will take over. If something happens here, this one will take over. Any questions as far as this is concerned? Is it confusing, Nelly? So, but, so DC is not part of the cluster environment? Okay, so you can have multiple nodes in your cluster, right? But our DC here, we don't want to make put it a member of that node. We don't want to add it in our cluster because we know it's just there to manage our Active Directory and all of those stuff. Right? But if we are looking at creating a three node cluster, yes, we can add our DC, but domain controllers should not be part of a cluster. So you have your test computer now, the test VM that you built, right? So what will happen after this? I'll give you an assignment. That, okay, go ahead and add your test VM in this cluster. At that point, you have now a three node cluster, meaning if something happens, this one goes down, this guy goes down, at least you still have your test VM where all your resources are going to fail over to, right? So you can have a multiple node cluster, not just, but the least is two, right? Because a cluster is a combination of two. You cannot have one, a cluster that has just one node, right? You need to have at least two, two independent computers that they are communicating and working as, uh, as one computer. Um, Brian. Uh, Brian, so what is the recommended um, maximum number of nodes you should have in an environment? So it, de it depends. Uh, practically, let me tell you my environment, I have a three node cluster, right? In my environment, I have a three node cluster because we have two data centers. We have two data centers. And in these two data centers, I have here, I have two, two nodes, node one and node two for my always on cluster. And here I have the third node, which here is just disaster recovery. So if something was to happen, Right, this one here, look at it as high availability because if this node goes down, then the other node is gonna take over. But if it happens there's a complete disaster where this entire data center here is down, right, then it's gonna fail over to my disaster recovery data center. So I have three nodes. Some companies have just two nodes. You can have just one node here and you have one node here. If something happens, it fails over there. If a company have three or four data centers, right? That is the number of nodes that you might have. But again, it just depends on the resources and the amount that you want to put in in building this technology in place. So this so is Brian, what, yes. The node is like <clears throat> a, a server. Yes, like I said earlier, a node, a, a, a node is like a computer, right? So when it is in a cluster now. It is a node. So in our situation here, we have, this is our computer here. We have prod and we have our DR, right? We have our DR and we have our test. We have our test here. So in this setup, in this setup, this is known as a three node cluster, right? This is known as a three node cluster. One, two, three. So the nodes now are just the VMs that we have in the cluster. But if we just, if this was not there, 
If this one was not there, take that one off. We'll just have a two node cluster, which is what we're going to do in class today. We're going to build a two node cluster. And what are the nodes in that cluster? You have your prod and your DR. Um, right. So yes. basically, just combining prod and DR, you make them as a cluster. Yes. And then they share the same file, right? It's not like you are building another server for for the cluster. So by just combining the DR and and the, um, the prod, they become a two node cluster. Yes, exactly. And then by adding another server, then they become a three node cluster. Yeah, if you add another one, they becomes a three node cluster. Of which they share the same the same file in case one goes down and then it fails so, over to the other. Because when we do this, we'll install SQL on both of these nodes, right? We'll install SQL on both of these nodes. So now the, it depends on the technology that we want to set up. Like all, when you set up always on, you tell always on that, okay, these two nodes are in the cluster. If something happens with this prod, then fail over to DR, right? It will fail over. You can either initiate a manual or automatic fail over and the other way around. So I don't know if that is clear. Um, Brian, please, I just wanted to confirm something. Yes. Yeah, so I saw somewhere, in fact, I was reading somewhere and it said, like, in your environment, you can have two, uh, um, is it database controller? I'm missing that word. Like DC, what our DC is doing to us? You, you call it what again? Domain controller. <laughs> domain, domain, domain controller. controller. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, I read somewhere they said in your environment, it is advisable to have two domain controller, at least two. So if one goes down, uh, the, the system can fail over to the other. So I just wanted to find out, is that setup too similar to this? Like instead of talking about the VMs, now we're talking about the domain controllers. Is it still clustering? Remember when I talked, when we were treating domain controllers, I told you that there is also high availability at the level of a domain controller. A company will not have only one domain controller because let's say we have just our GC. If our GC goes down and nobody will be able to log into the, to the company, right, to the network. But now a company, when they say, okay, we're going to have two domain controllers where they replicate, right, information that is coming into domain controller one replicates to domain controller two. Whatever technology, there are a lot of technologies that you can use in order to do that, right? Clustering can be one of them. But clustering now is just linking the two Windows computers together, the two nodes together. Then whatsoever technology or whatsoever uh, use you want to uh, you wanna put in that cluster depends on you. So we have our two node cluster now. We're going to use this to install always on. That is on our side. So the, the system admin guys, they have their domain controller. They said, okay, how are we gonna, what technology are we gonna put in place to ensure that if this, if this domain controller is down, the other will take over, right? Clustering, yes, can still be part of it. But I want you to understand clustering just that you, there are two independent computers that you have combined them. You have used the technology within Microsoft to build a cluster. A cluster means two, like two things that are combined together right, to perform a particular function. You build that technology to install a particular application that can fail from one to another. So uh, let me go through this slide. I think you, most of your questions will be answered and then I'll give room for questions. So, uh, Boya. Yes. Yes, one quick question. My GC is uh, refusing to connect. Yeah, we'll look at, we'll look at that after. So, when you look at a cluster, like I said, it's a, it's a group of two computers that have been set up to act like one, right? Share resources. If this happens, this goes down. So when you create a cluster, these are the same things that you'll see. You give that cluster an IP address. You are not building a new computer, right? We are not building a new computer. It's just a technology and the applications in there that we use to give it a virtual IP address, a virtual network name, then uh, a, a cluster also have a storage, right? So in our case here, our two node computers, they have their storage, we have C drive or whatsoever. Then when we have this cluster set up now, what application are we gonna make it to use this cluster? We're gonna install SQL and set up SQL to use this cluster, right? So looking at this, this is, this is exactly what it looks like. So you have your server one here, 
72, which is a, uh, these are the nodes that we are talking about now. This is a two node cluster to my left, right? So how do applications now connect to this, to this cluster? You see, initially an application will be, will connect directly. Let me take a, let me take a picture of this. So initially, initially, these computers were not clusters, right? Let me say we have three applications. We have three applications that are connected, are connecting to these our two servers. Uh, two are connecting here and one is connecting here. So this application by default will connect to this, to this node. This other application will connect to this node. This application connect to this node. So applications now, they connect directly to that database. But when we build a cluster and say, that, okay, the two of you, we're gonna look at you all as one. So now we have a virtual IP address and a name, which now an application will just connect but here. So once an application connect, it will route you now to whichever cluster is, whichever node is available at that moment. So if this node fails now, this application connecting now will be rerouted to this other node. Right, so that is that is how it works. Another set of a cluster is this: the one that you need a shared storage, right? So you have two, our two nodes. It could be our DC and our prod that we have here, right? And we create a shared storage. It could be a disk or something else. Then we'll say that okay, these two nodes, you all are using this storage, right? So if something happens with this node. All will happen, what will happen is the storage will be presented now to node two. At every point, only one of these servers is seeing the storage here. If something happens here, then the storage is now uh, presented to node two. And node two just continue working normally as if there is no issue. With this one, it's a traditional failover clustering because you see there is a single point of failure. What happens if this storage goes down? You see that both nodes in the cluster they will not have any storage. Right, so there is also a technology that we're going to do in this class called traditional failover clustering, where we we'll use this to create a shared storage and build this same environment. Right, so these are the two setups that you'll see. So when you are talking about cluster uh, SQL installation, remember at one point we we'll tell you that there are two ways to install SQL. You either install SQL as a standalone or you install SQL in a cluster environment. Right, so when we get to this setup where we have a shared storage here. That is when we'll install SQL as a, stand, as a, as a cluster. We'll do a cluster installation of SQL and you understand that when we get there. So, uh, another thing, advantages of a cluster, right? When you're implementing clustering technology ensures high availability for mission critical applications, right? And services, because both hardware and software failures are quickly dictated. Because as we have said, you have two nodes. If something is happening with one node, it will automatically, things will fail over to the second node. And you can easily resolve that there by gaining high availability. Whereas if you have just one uh, standalone node, if you have just like standalone and something happens, the node is down completely, right? So nodes in the cluster are also able to automatically resume its previous operation, right? If it is if it is brought online again. So if this, if you have two nodes and one fails, the resources fail over to the other node. And it happens that that node that failed, we fixed it and it came back online, then it will just resume. Resources can be filled over back to that node, right? So uh, clustering resources, this technology increases scalability, right? We have two computers. Now let's say, uh, in our case, we have two computers. After we are done with our two computers, one is in the US, one is in Canada. We open up a branch office in Africa, right? And then we said, okay, you know what? We need to also have a server in Africa. We can now build a three node cluster, meaning one here, one in Canada, and one in Africa. Users that are connected to our applications in, uh, in Cameroon or in Africa, they should be able to connect to one of those clusters in order to read or write something, depending on the setup that you have it, right? You see that when we are setting up the technologies, the always on technology, that is when we'll start looking at, okay, is this cluster a primary cluster, a secondary 
or this note, is it primary or secondary? Is it for reading data only or is it to write data? You understand all of this when we start putting in the technologies into the cluster. Right now we are just building it, right? So cluster technologies also reduce a single point of failure, exactly as it says. If you have just, if you have two nodes and you have mission critical applications, right? Then if one fails, then you know that the other node will take over. But if they were not in a cluster environment, what happens if one fails, that is it, the application is down. So you see, that is why they tell you this technology, it reduces that single point of failure, right? Okay, so another thing, implementing clustering technologies uh, ensure high ability of mission critical databases. We have talked about that. I think this is a repetition. Uh, this is a single point of failure. Yeah, that's repetition. Delete this slide. Okay, so. Let us, let's look at this. Understanding a quorum, right? I'll explain this when we are really building up the cluster. Now I just want to have a general understanding. When we start building the cluster, I'll explain every single point of it. So a quorum for a cluster is determined by the number of voting elements that must be part of an active cluster membership, right? For the cluster to start probably. I'm gonna explain this here, uh, Paint. This is very important for you to understand. So, we said there, there's a quorum, right? Same as you go for when you are in a meeting. Let me say your constitution says you are 50 of you in this meeting. For any decision to be valid, you need at least 30 members to vote for that decision, right? It's the same thing like in a cluster environment. So let me say we have a two-node, we have a two-node cluster. We have a two-node cluster now, right? Those two nodes, what SQL sees is, or what window sees, each of these two nodes, they have one vote each. Each of these nodes have one vote each. So at every point, this is an even number of clusters. So if something happens and this guy goes down, what will happen is the cluster itself will be down, right? Because you cannot have a cluster of one computer, right? You cannot have a cluster of one computer. So when we are talking about a quorum, we are looking at a, a, a method to keep this cluster up and running if in case one node goes down, right? If we had three nodes, if we had a three node cluster, and if we had a three node cluster, one goes down, what will happen is these two are still there, right? That is, two are still there, the cluster will still be able to work. But if we had, if two of them goes down, what will happen? The cluster is going to completely uh, get down because you cannot have a cluster of one computer, right? So you see the advantages of three node or of an even number, the, the advantage of the odd number of clusters over an even number of clusters. But now there are technologies where you can tell this two node cluster that, okay, I have this guy here who is going to act like another node in this cluster and give you validity and should be able to vote if this guy goes down. That is when we'll be creating five shares uh, or disk witnesses or cloud witnesses to keep this cluster up. You will not understand this now, but when we are installing and setting up the cluster, I will explain and it will make more sense at that time. So this is just a practical example here, right? You say a quorum for a cluster to determine to be determined by the number of voting elements that must be part of the cluster. So uh, when you are setting up the quorum, these are, there are various ways that you can do it. You can use a file share, you can use a Dix witness, you can use a cloud witness to set up your quorum, right? So look at this picture here. To my left, you have a three node cluster, right? So the first image, uh, let me do this. So if you look at this, mute yourself, uh, Silver, please. If you look at this, right, this is the first image here to my left. You have a three node cluster. So each of these three node cluster, they are, if they are up, all and running, then you see you have two votes. This is one vote, this is one vote. And this is the guy that is up and running now, right? So this guy has two votes. You said, okay, you are the Oga Pata Pata. You are able to go, right? So now what happens if, this guy, if one of these nodes fail, what will happen? You still have what we call, you still have the two node clusters, 
right? You have a two node now. And this two node, you still have one, one vote, right? You still have one, one vote here. Okay, what happens now in the next picture if all of these two guys go down, right? The cluster is gonna go down because you cannot have a cluster of just you. You cannot, you, you'll be like Pobia that you just sit and say, okay, this is my decision, I'll run it, right? You need to at least have a vote, the majority need to be there to say, okay, you, you have to be the resources that is online at this moment. So how do you prevent this situation from happening, right? Here, these are still the three node clusters. And we do, we do what we call a quorum disk. This could be a quorum or a, uh, a file share. It could be a file share, just a folder that you have created in a network. This folder now just act like one vote into this cluster. So if this guy goes down, this two, right? So if this one has one vote now, if this guy, if no one goes down, then we still have one, two, and this witness here is still acting as three. If node two goes down, then we still have this node that is up and this witness that is counting as one. So you still have two of them. Then if this one goes down now, the entire cluster goes down, right? So with this file share here, we are able to utilize all of these three nodes in case any of them goes down. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Question. Yes, uh, Brad, it's clear, but I was just looking at it the other way around. If, for example, we didn't have this quorum disk, and uh, in a situation where, let me say, like, okay, the picture on the left, mm -hmm. the third image where two of the node goes down, yeah. will that single node, the other, the other single node, will it run normally like our normal single computer running? I just want to know what yes, happens. It will run normally like a single computer, but it will not the the, the cluster will not be up. Right? Yeah, cluster will not be up. Cluster will not be up. But yeah, you'll be able normally. to log into the node as a single core as a computer, do whatever you're doing, but just the cluster configuration is not gonna be there. Okay. Okay. Am I recording? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. So this is how this is the setup that we have that we have to do in this class, right? Just understand when we start doing it. Again, it's very easy to do it. Uh, just do some more, uh, some more research, and uh, you should be good. So this is this is exactly when uh, when we are talking about a quorum disk. Uh, you can do a quorum disk. You can use just like a disk on your hard drive that you set up. You can do a file share, or you can do a cloud witness. We we'll do all of those as we are setting up the the file, the, the cluster. So some of the terminologies that I want you to be aware of before we get this started is a node, right? It's an independent server in a cluster, right? It's an independent server in a cluster. A server can be a node in a cluster, right? If it has run, if it is running either of the following version of Windows, Windows Server 2012, 30, uh, 2016, 2019, or whatsoever, right? But just understand that a node it's just an independent computer. Right now, your Pro and your DC, they are independent computers, right? Even after you install, fill the cluster, you set up the cluster there, they're still gonna be independent computers. But that cluster is just that configuration at the background, right? Another thing that we'll be looking at, and we'll get detailed into this one, we will start applying the technologies in that cluster. We'll look at active, active, right? You have two node clusters. Do you want that this node? should just be there doing all the workload. Everything is working on this node, and the other one is just a backup. Or you want to split the resources, say that, okay, since I have these two node clusters, some, when somebody is trying to read data from a database, connect to this node. If you are trying to write your database, connect to this one, thereby trying to split out the workload. That way you make both nodes active, active. Because in this our scenario right here, let me say um, we have all of these nodes are up, right? We have three nodes. If we say we want them to be active, active, it means people can connect to this node and do whatever and read data. People can connect to this node, generate reports. People can connect here and write reports, right? That is an active, active. But if we want but an active, passive, let me say we have our two nodes. We'll say that, okay, this guy here, you are just here for disaster recovery. All connections coming in will be here. The only time connection we're gonna get to this guy is if this particular guy is down. That way, this guy is being overloaded. All the transactions are coming in here. 
But this guy is just sitting at the background waiting for this one to crash, right? So that one now is active passive. This one in this setup, where the secondary, I mean the, the other node is not, but is just there for DR, it is called a passive node. And this one now is called the active node because this is where all the transactions and operations are taking place. And you understand this when we start setting up the technologies in place. We'll set up always on, and we'll say that with this always on, we want to have the primary server should be uh, uh, read and write, and the secondary server should be read only, so that people can log in here and generate reports. So we're going to see this when we are setting up the, the technology. All right. The next, we are talk of active, active, and active, passive. The other thing that cluster just like the name, a group of two or multiple uh, physical servers that function as one network server. So that is it. So uh, the other thing, you have cluster aware applications, means applications that can use this cluster feature in Windows, like SQL. You can use like SQL, it's a cluster aware application, right? Then uh, the last thing there is failover. What is failover? The process when the resources of a failed node are resumed by another node in a cluster, which is what I have just explained. You have two nodes, this one fail, that one takes over. So here, understand what is a node, what it mean, what is mean by active, active. You really understand the active, active when we start setting up the technologies in place, right? So this should not bother you once we start setting it up, it's very easy, very easy, and you'll see how it works, right? Okay, so any questions? Um, Brian. Yes. Okay, so for my lame understanding, um, I'll refer to them as the nodes, just like you said, because initially when you said the prod and DR, I was uh -huh. thinking that the prod is gonna have, um, you know, it's just like you have the datas that, um, that the prod has, and then the DR is gonna have another data, you know, like different databases runs in the DR and different databases running in the, in the prod. But now understand it like, let's assume the node one and two, they are empty servers. And then when both of them um, come together because they have the same um, name and the same IP address, whatever you, that goes into node one is the same thing that goes into node two. So that now will be the application setup that we'll put in there. For now, we are just building a cluster, right? When we set up C, uh, always on, that is when you really, you really see that. So now we are just building the cluster to say, okay, these are two clusters. Even you have your hard drive, you have this, right? But failover should occur. If a failover occurs, every resource that is in you, the resources that we are talking about now are things that when we set up the always on right, databases, they should fail over from this one to that one. But the databases are gonna be the same in all nodes, in the case of always on. The databases are gonna be the same in all nodes. So you, you'll see that. Okay, so uh, what I'll do, we'll just go through the first step, it's just gonna be simple. We'll walk you through creating the cluster and stuff like that, right? Let me have somebody share the screen because I already have this set up then I'll walk you through. Who wants to share? Sherry. Hi. Sorry, I okay. So you have your you have your computers, this and that. So to install or to set up a cluster, right? First thing that you need to do, you need to add the fill of our cluster uh, future in the nodes that are gonna be part of the cluster, right? So now we're gonna set up the cluster, and you can use any node as long as these computers are communicating with one another. You can use any of those nodes. So let us go to uh, your prod, 
let us log into our prod with the cluster admin account because you need an account that have permission, right? So log into your prod with a cluster admin account, everybody. As we are, you, you understand this as we are, we are going. So now, at least your resume, you all, you all are able to set up Active Directory, create users in Active Directory and groups, right? Yeah. And Margaret? Yeah, yes. Nice. And you know how to reset passwords and unlock accounts. Yes. All right, so everybody, uh, if you're on your prod, uh, up, bring up server manager, and verify if you have the failover clustering feature installed. This is high level stuff. When you start talking in interviews that you have a two node cluster that you have set up and you have set up always on log shipping and traditional failover clustering, they know that, yeah, you know what you're talking about. So to check what you have installed on that server, you see, okay, you should, when you click on that tools, you see your failover cluster manager, right? You see it there. Perfect, so open up failover cluster manager. Anyone having issues? You don't have anyone missing the failover cluster manager? So my uh, my prod is not working. It says I should press Control Alt and Delete, but I'm pressing it. It's not no Control Delete. That will be on your computer. Remember, in class, you need to click on Action on the top left. Then when you click on Action, look at what she's doing here. Click on Action. Y yes, I. And then you see control delete. Press whatever they are telling you to do, the control or delete, then you, you see the option to sign out, sign out and sign in back. That's what I did. Sure, that's, I'm not even on that screen. That, that's not the screen that Share I have. Screen, let me see. This is what I have. Yeah, yeah, do what I'm telling you. Minima minimize the click on the those two squares on the top uh, on the center. Click on the two squares up there. In, in between the multiplication and the negative sign. Yes, yeah, so now click on action to your left. Okay. I want you to type login as cluster admin. Uh, Brian, yeah. my cluster doesn't remember. She doesn't have a cluster. Okay. Who? Oh. Brian. Yes. Can I use a different uh, user? Uh, my cluster doesn't doesn't open. Remember, we tried last time with the passwords and changed them, switched them, but still didn't. Really? Hold yeah. on, let me, let me see what you have. Okay, stop sharing. Share your screen, let me see. I don't remember that. that Ryan, one. can you just delete a user and create a new one? Yeah, definitely. But why should you, why should you delete? Because I think he was, he had a problem from when he created a user. Maybe something was spelling or something was wrong. But Very when you go to Active Directory, do you see the user? You can rename it. Yeah. So, no, hold on. What, what are you trying to do? Uh, log out and. No, if it is not working, it's not working. Just go to your active direction. Let me see the user you are trying to log in with. Uh, 
Went to DC. It's gonna come if you have clicked on it just once, it should, it should come up. Don't know about don't know about level the comfort. Okay, so uh, right click on that user, go to the properties. Let me see. Click on a uh, no. Click on uh, account. Cluster admin. Click, click on a uh, cluster. Is that logon name? Is it supposed to be care we take care we take? No, that logon name is supposed to be cluster admin. Delete that and type in cluster admin there. You, you, the other care we take this way, I think that's what it you doesn't, it doesn't permit me to delete it. The one in the small letter. Delete, go to the one with the small letter. Let me see, oh. can you delete from there? Yes. Yeah. Click on apply. Uh, reset the password just to make sure that it's okay. Nope, there's reset password that they fit the four thing there. Password one. Okay, go ahead and log in. Just minimize the VM. You don't you need all of those, you don't need to close. Just minimize your VM. Okay, that should be, you just had the name written wrongly. Thank All right. You. So, Margaret, share your screen. Who was that? Was that Maxwell? Right. Oh. Uh, uh, Silva, I thought, Silva, you had an issue? Is Silva there? All right. So now this is our maximize this, maximize your screen. I like your screen, at least everybody can see clearly. So this is our failover cluster manager, right? This is our failover cluster manager. Same like you have your hyper V manager that you manage your VMs. You have hype, you have a failover cluster manager here where you can manage all your, where you can manage your clusters, right? Here you, it's just the same like every graphical user interface application. You don't need to look at what you are doing. So right now you don't have any cluster set up yet. You don't have any cluster set up yet. So we're gonna set up a cluster and we're gonna give it a, a name. Let me see. Uh, we wanna call it a ZBA cluster, right? That's database cluster. Just send this in the chart. The, 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 the very good thing with these VMs I notice is this virtualization is it has inbuilt notes that it guides you on whatever. If you, yep. if you read, is it like fill of a cluster? So our cluster, we're gonna put it dot, uh, that was the first cluster, dot 10. That was gonna be the IP address of the cluster. I'm gonna send this in the chart, right? Uh, if I see the chart, I'll send it. Uh, 
Okay. So I'm just putting in the DBA uh, database cluster. And that's the IP address we're gonna give it. All right, so now uh, you have here to create a cluster, right? Uh, you see there are many ways to do it. To the top right, you see the create cluster, right? And on the center here as well, you see create cluster. Okay, so one of the prerequisites to create a cluster, or when you all click there, one of the prerequisites to create a cluster is that all of the nodes needs to be in that network, right? They need to be communicating. Click there on create cluster, please. So one of the prerequisites is that these nodes need to be in, in that network. They should be communicating. They should be able to ping each other, right? In order to create that cluster, this node should be able to ping each other. All right. So once you click there, it's just like the, the wizard. You click on next. So now we're going to ask you what it tells you. Enter the server name that you want to be in the cluster, right? So now I want you to put in prot. And then click on art. So now you are telling your system, your server, that your, your assistant, okay, these are the nodes that I want to be in this cluster. It will browse through your environment and say, that, oh yeah, there's a computer called prot, right? And it brings it up, prot.kwtech.com. So now you add in, add in your, your DR. So if your computers are not communicating, then you will not get past this point. If your DR or your prot is not up, you will not get past this point. Let me know who, who got stuck here. Silva. I've been calling, where have you been? Mm, I've been here, I, I told you that my DR is not uh, no, connected. I, I called you a few minutes ago, you, know, you did not respond to look at the issue. You are not there. Share your screen, let me see. So, you so your DC is not, when did this start happening? Just today. Click on connect. Uh, did you, uh, I just want to make sure you did not try reinstalling the computer, right? Did you? No, no, what what I did was uh, remove one feature that I mistakenly at uh, in my test again. So, I mean, on your DC, did you do anything on your DC? No, not at all. Click on action. The, are the other ones up? Yes. Uh, click on turn off. Let me see. Uh, do you have your test VM up? No, my test VM is not up. Bring up Hyper V Manager. Okay, so it's stopping. Let's wait, wait for it to, to finish stopping. And uh, yeah, while you're doing while you're doing that, when it comes up, try try to bring it up again. Uh, we'll okay. take we'll take a look. Uh, so let me see. But bring your connect to your prod. Go to your prod and bring up the Hyper Vim and the failover cluster manager as well. I prod refused to connect because the DC is not connected. Yeah, because the DC is off. You're not be able to log in with the with the domain that the domain controller is down. Okay, so we just wait for it to stop because we cannot we cannot do we cannot do anything. When it comes back up, we'll figure out how to help you. Right. All so, right. Yeah, Margaret, share, share again. Oh my God. All right. So now, who else is not here? Who is having issues at this point? Let's be on the same page, guys. Anyone having issues, issues here? Mine is just slow. I don't know if it's just taking time. Have you added uh, the DC? I'm still, to get, I'm still to get dead. Every time I click, it slows down. I'm sorry, my is not showing um, drkiaritech.com. So how did you get to that place? Uh, go, uh, D how? Go back. Sorry, Type in there and click on art. You need to add the computer. You all follow, please. Right? Let's go. Let's go step by step. 
So who, who else is not here? Who is not able to add his or her computers in this cluster? Um, I think I added prod, but my TR is not able because um, I think my MVs, the three of them cannot run at the same time because it's slow. So. Who, is, who is that? Is that one? Yes. Yeah, definitely you will not be able to run at the same time. So you will not be able to do it one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what you can do, just add one and go. It will just add that node in the cluster. Then uh, once you get your stuff set up, you can add the other one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What happened? Why didn't you call to get that stuff added? You can... I think he, um, he gave, um, Doc told me he was going to help me in the afternoon, but he got too busy and, and he couldn't. So I'll, I'll try to get him tomorrow to, to help me with that. Yeah, try it, try it tomorrow. Let's get it done. All right, so now if you have these two, Momisol, are you here? Momisol? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so click on next now, uh, Margaret. So all you need so far, what we have done here is we have just explained what a cluster is, right? And we said the prerequisite for you to build a, a two-node cluster is you, first of all, these computers need to be communicating with one another. And that is just what we have done. So it tells you for servers you selected for this cluster report from cluster conversion validator test appears to be missing. <laughs> right. Do you want to configure validation test before continuing? So when you are creating a cluster, one of the first things that you need to do, you want to run a test to make sure that, okay, these computers that I want them to be part of this cluster, they are actually communicating with one another, right? Uh, Silver, please, by default, mute yourself. By default, you should be muted, only on mute when you want to say something. So here you see, yes, I want, uh, if you click yes, when I click next, run a configuration validation test. You want to do this, you want to build this, run this test so that it should scan the two nodes that you want to be in a cluster and give you recommendation. Is it okay or is it not okay? It's just like when you're installing SQL, right? At times you run a validation and tell you that you need to restart or you need to do this, or you need to do this, right? That's the same thing that you, that you need to do here. And this report is very important because when you create a cluster, you know Microsoft is still our technical boss, they still support us. When you, if you have a technical issue with your cluster, you want Microsoft to support you, they'll ask you what was the validation result. So you need to always save that. So check the, click on next to run that validation test. Okay, and then click on next. There's, this will run the validation test to determine whether the configurations are okay or not. Yeah, so it's running It's running the test. Uh, click on next. So it's gonna run that test to tell you if all your settings are okay. Click on next. All right. So this should be running for everybody. It's just testing your system, testing your network, testing uh, your storage. Uh, everything. If it did, if you have any warnings, that would be fine. But if you have like a failure, then you'll not be able to create a cluster. So again, just recycle back and try to understand what the cluster is. By the time we are done with this, you will really have an understanding of it, right? I know it's hard, but uh, so it's gonna take a few minutes to run this test. Silver, is it up or no? So this is what I want to do. Let me mute, and once this is done, so, so you see, it, it, you have finished the test. So this is the report that you see. Scroll away down in that report. So you see that you get some warnings on some part, right? Scroll away up, go up a little bit. So one in the uh, DR character does not have an adapter usable by the cluster with a defined default gateway. Uh, Note prod.com uh, does not have an adapter usable with this. So these are just some warnings, right, that you get when you're building a cluster because by default, if you're building a cluster, you might also want each of those nodes to have two separate network cards, right? Like each node should have two network cards. So if network card one goes down, the other network card will, still be, will be up. 
but that is just applicable in very robust environment. You could still just do it like that. All of those ones are warning. You can build a cluster with this report, right? So click on view, view report. Click on view report, then uh, it's gonna open that up. This is what you need to save a copy so that uh, my, click on ask me later. So that, uh, so if you scroll down, or what do you do? Go back to the first, is to uh, click on that first tab to your left. Go up, nope, nope, nope. Still here. Click on close out of this. You see where you have close, tell about closer to your left. Up, 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 yeah, right there. So this is where you see, if you wanna see any of the report, it tells you inventory, right? It sucks, it succeeded. Uh, network, you see that? The network, the warning is coming under your network. You have just one network adapter. System configurations, you have some warning there. And then storage, it's not applicable because it's not a shared storage. So you can screw, if you click on the network, mm -hmm. click on that. So it will tell you what are you, what are you, what are you looking at. It tells you uh, list digs to be validated. This is under storage, so network is up there. The warning is coming from validate IP configuration, right? Validate network communication. So click on validate IP configuration. Up there, that is not network, that is storage. Yeah, so validate IP, so you see it gives you a warning, right? It tells you this, validate IP configuration a unique and subnet configuration correctly. So that's just a warning. If you scroll down, you will see it probably tells you something. Uh, local area connection is one. All of this. So this is just a report for you to go through to see what is happening in your environment, right? With those two nodes. So once you are done with this, you can save a copy of this. If you ever need Microsoft to help you in one way or the other, they will ask for this report. So close out of that. And you see the yellow stuff, all of that, they are just warning. You can close out of that. Please, is there a way to generate like a PDF a version of this report so we save it? Wow, how are you doing? Uh, you can, you can say, look at that location. You're close to it. There's a location up there. It is up there. I don't know how you want to save it, but there are links that you can open. I don't know if you'll be able to generate a PDF version. You want to copy it and put it in a PDF file. So, close out of this. Uh, sorry, Brian. Shall I? Okay. Can we click on finish now? Yeah, that's where, that's where we are right now. So, now that you have seen your report, your validation is good, click on finish. Okay, so now it will probably tell you now, this is where you need to start creating that cluster. We need to start building the cluster now, right? So we need to give it a cluster name. And let's give it a cluster name, uh, database cluster. Sure, excuse me, sir. Yes. I'm mistaking the press on cancel. Then you need to go and start back afresh. Go back to click on create cluster. Go next, but now do not click that validation. When you get to that point where it's telling you uh, click OK to run the validation, don't do it because you have already done it and you have seen that it is working, right? OK, OK, just when I get that, just click next. When you get there, check the second box. The first one will be, it tells you, check. it's already checked by default that yes, run validation. The second option there, it says do not run the validation. OK. Share your screen, let me see. Silva, yours is still stopping. He's stopping. Brian, are you recording? Yes. So create the cluster back, uh, Chica. You are there. Click there. Read it. Click it. That is that is fine. Click on next. So now, because you do not, you, that validation was already there, so it is the same thing. So putting the cluster name. Okay. Database, Database cluster. Database cluster, okay. So everybody follow from here. 
database cluster. So now it's gonna actually IP address. Remember we have said these two, so now what we are doing is we are taking these two computers and we are combining them, giving them this name, right? Just one name now will refer to those two computers called database cluster, right? And we will have its own IP address. So, and it tells you this, click on the IP address and type in the 192 to your right. Click here to type the IP address. This one to your left is just telling you this is the network where these computers are in. Then the 192.168 network. So click there and type in the IP address of the cluster. Chica, click on, read what it says there. What does it say? Uh, it says um, address. Okay, okay. Click here to type an address. Okay. So it tells you you are in the 192.168.0. Now I want your, your cluster to be a 10, right? The IP address would be uh, 192.168.10. Um, so Brian, the yes. network um, that you have slash 24, what does it mean? Does it mean that that's the entire, you can only have like 24? No, this, this one instead means that um, you can have more, you can have, you can utilize all the IP addresses that are within this uh, 24, this 24 subnet, right? So that is when you want to break down the networks like that, you can start breaking that down, but we do not get, we do not get into that. So CIDA, CIDA notation, dot 20, slash 24 means all the IP addresses that are within this 192.168.0 network, you can, you can use all of them. Okay, so click on next. Excuse me. Yes. So when you says um, enter server name, I didn't get your question. Like when you're trying to create um, cluster, new cluster. So um, the option says enter server name and select server. Can somebody walk at that through? Are you just joining the class? I've been in classes. I got some little uh, destruction. I'm sorry, my baby. Okay, let somebody walk at through. Share your screen. Um, actually, I'm using I'm using different computers. So I'm using my other uh, laptop. I'm using it for Zoom, and the other one I'm working on the other one. So I can share my screen. So they not. Yeah, you need to put by the computers that you want them to be in a cluster. Your prod. You need to put your prod, and you click add. You put your DR, and you click add. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, let us know if you have any issues. So if you are here, uh, you see the options that says add all eligible storage, right? Is everybody here who is not on this page? Okay, so uncheck that box that says add all eligible storage. So you're telling your system, if you check that box, it means all eligible storage that you have on this computer will be part of that cluster. Even though it's not necessary now because we have not configured any shared storage. Right, so let us check it. That what? I just unchecked it. Do I need to check it? But that is what I said. Uncheck that box. Oh, okay. So, uh, click on next. So now, what is happening is validating all of that, and it is building. It is building that cluster for you. Right again. The process is always very easy. It's just for you to understand. That is why I always like to explain these things to you. Try to understand, ask questions to better your understanding. So it is building, it is guiding that, that uh, it's creating that cluster now. Once that cluster is done, I'm going to go through and uh, explain to you what it is and what we have done and all that good stuff. So who is having issues? Ada, are you good? Some words. I, I'm somewhat good, uh, but I need one more question. I mean, one more answer. Uh, Way says, yes, when I click next run, configuration validation test. Do I leave that checked or uncheck the box? Leave that check for it to run the validation and okay. see that, okay, your two nodes are okay to be in a cluster. So click on, click on finish here, if you are, if you are there. 
click on finish. Where do I add a database cluster? Because I see that. That is after you are done with the configure. When you are done running that configuration test, you click on next. It's gonna you, you got, it's gonna ask you for that. Okay, and I I'm, I'm at this phase where it says um run all tests. Run only tests. I click on run all tests and then just click on next. Okay. It should be checked by default. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, the cluster name is database cluster. The IP address is one nine two one six. If I have it in the chart, so it should be good. So oh, no, no, no. Thank you. Well, uh, Brian, yes. I'm walking. Please, I'm just walking. before, just be, nice. Okay, just before we click on finish, nice. there's another tab that says view report. Which other report is this? You might is it like a summary of what we have done. Click on it and see there's nothing wrong in clicking. You can uh, just to see, but it's just giving you a report of all of you, all of these things that you have done. So, okay. Uh, let us see. This is our this is our cluster that we have built, right? So I want you to go to uh, open up command prompt. Open up command prompt and try to ping. Graham, before before you proceed, I I I, I think I have a little issue here. Okay. Who is having issues? If you have issues, share your screen. Okay, one second. Can you see? Not yet. Not yet. So do you see? Yeah, I see. But we are not rich here. We are still trying to oh, validate. Oh, hold on, yeah. hold on right here. See that critical error right there? I already have it here, set up here, but then it's telling me this little warning over here, so I don't really know. So I clicked okay. on the warning. And that I was I'm, reading. I'm, huh? saying that, I'm saying that we have not reached here yet. You already had this, right? So let me validate the order. Let me oh, validate okay. the order, then we'll come there. And I'll take a look at it. All right, no problem. You can yeah. stop. Okay, let me stop sharing. Yeah, we'll come there. We'll, we'll be troubleshooting all of those error messages. Okay. Yes. Um, yes, if you're having an issue, go ahead and share. Anybody having an issue? Kendrick, stop it. Stop. Mine's the operation field. I don't know if I missed a step. Who is, is this one? Yes. Click on OK. Uh, Edie, uh, please, can you mute yourself, please? OK, so y'all, I don't think it's going to work if you're trying to build a one node cluster. Click on Add, let me see. You really need to get your computer up. Uh, click on Next. Click on the IP, uh, put in the name. Edi. Yes, sir. By default, you should be muted. You only unmute yourself when you want to say something. Right? So that will not the noise is will not be coming too much like that. All right, click on next. Let me see one. So I'm just doing this, but I don't think you'll be able to build a, a one node cluster. Just wait, let me see. You will not be operational. Okay, so click on okay. So just to see what is happening, I want you to go to click on a search and type in event viewer. Search on the bottom left of your screen. Yeah, you will not be able to. You need to update your computer. Type in event viewer. What's wrong with her computer? Uh, she has just uh, eight gigabyte of RAM, and you cannot be adding just a one node cluster. 
So you need to update that computer and uh, click on Event Viewer and try to add board notes there to see what is happening. So are you following this? Yes, I'm good. All right. So click on a uh, Windows lock. Click on that plus sign, uh, the arrow next to Windows lock. Click on the arrow. Click on the arrow. Yeah. Sorry for interruption. So when I'm done. So click on, hold on to that. Click on application. I'm just try to see what error message is going to give. It's going to give you. It's taking some time. You just want to see what is telling you. What is the real cause? This is how you troubleshoot. This is how you troubleshoot issues. I remember we talked about uh, event viewer, right? So all right. Uh, click on the click on that error. Let me see. The one that's the, the one that says error. Okay, license activation. This failed the following error code. This and this. What time did that occur? Seven. Oh, no. So that is not. That is not. Uh, okay. So click on secure system. Click on system to your left. To your left under the Windows lock. We are trying to see what happens. The software processor is enter the running state. Click on warning. The warning, the one that shows warning. Okay, Cloud was unable to do my peer results because of these 30 minutes. Click on setup to the left. Setups. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there is any related error message as far as that is concerned. So, no. Okay, so update pillar cluster PowerShell or package this was successfully turned on. Blah, 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 blah. So that is fine. I think it's just because you are trying to adjust a one node cluster, but closer of it, you'll not be able to. Okay. Yeah. So let us have a let us have a break, then I'll be helping those who are having issues. So let's take a let's take a 15 minutes. Let's get back here at 10. So let me stop recording for now. So somebody can. See that. Don't forget, he needs, she needs to delete the cluster from the DC it's a computer object. Uh, she'll give it a different name. Okay. Yeah, she'll give it a uh, database cluster. She has a DB cluster. I mean, your network, your network seems to be poor. Call them to come and check your network because it's really getting, it is getting slow. Each time you click on something, it takes like there's a delay time about three seconds for it to show over here. Yeah, it's because my desktop is a little far from my router. Oh, bye. Uh -huh. So, and this is the only place I have to put my desktop. So, so you need to buy a network cable and. I actually do, but um, I have to. I do have the cable. I just have to. Um, Take the cable and and connect directly yeah. and remove the. But that's fine. If you want to proceed, you can proceed with your class, and then I'll just. No, it's um, okay. I was just I was just saying it. I don't. What does this say on your screen now? Is it still loading? Yeah, it's still loading. Okay. But yeah. I, I don't I don't want to hold you guys back. It, no, yeah, yeah, I will. Brian, she just, reset. if she can do our network reset, because my own, my computer is far from my my router too. My router is way back in the in the living room, and I'm I'm here super super far from where it is. So I encountered the issue you're having currently last week, and the only way I was able to solve the problem was to reset my network. No, and I'm mean, okay, right. that is. What do you mean by research network? Like you reset your. No, that is, at the, that is at the VM level. This one, this one has nothing to do with your network. That is at the VM level. This should be good. You reset when you are unable to connect to the internet or unable to do certain things, or you have network really network issues. This one is just slowness. So it's not. Yeah, a, it's not that's what it was having. Everything was super slow. I was having the same issue. Like 
my computer keeps spinning. It's not that I don't have internet, but the internet is really limited. So I have to do the resetting, and afterwards I was fine. So. So the IP is one nine two dot ten. Yeah. Okay. Ada. Yeah. Then she can try that later on when she has the time. And the reason why I, I don't like to put it is like when I I. I go to the restroom sometimes I forget that I have this long line reaching there. <laughs> so okay, so you don't want me to add this, right? No, that is fine. That is so uh uncheck that add eligible storage. That one is really important when you're building a traditional pillar clustering. But we don't if you don't uncheck add it, all, it to storage. add all eligible, do you want me to click there? No, that is fine. Just uncheck it. Oh, uncheck Just, it. Okay. Yeah. Click on next. Yeah. Okay, why that is building? So this uh, this database, the cluster sir, the cluster, is on, on on my DC, and then I think she mentioned that I have to remove from my DC as well. No, it's not. It's not on your. It's not on your DC. So what you have done is it, the nodes that are in the cluster are what you have added. You have brought on your DR. So you yes. can connect to this cluster on any server that has a failover cluster manager installed there. So okay. your DC is not a member of this cluster. You have a two node cluster and the two nodes yes. are your prod and your DR. Yeah. So stop okay. sharing, uh, let Margaret share so we can proceed and get mm -hmm. that set up. Um, Brian, while she's doing that, do I have to kill my, I mean, destroy my cluster and then and then recreate another one just so I can uncheck. No, no, you're fine. You don't have to. If you want to learn on doing that, you can do it. But for this class, you don't have to. You are good. Okay. Okay. So this is what you see when you build a cluster, right? This is what you see. This is a cluster that the Telva cluster manager just tells you everything about that cluster. Most of these things, please mute yourself. I'm muting you. Uh, most of these things, you'll see them when you start working with, uh, when you start working. Uh, if you look at under the navigation, you can see everything, storage, cluster events, the nodes, your network. Just monitor this as every other thing, right, um, Margaret? So if you look on the very bottom where it tells you cluster, uh, the cluster core resources, you see the name on the very bottom? On the very bottom, server name. Margaret, can you unmute yourself so we communicate? Yes. Okay. Click on the plus sign next to the server name. This one? I don't see your mouse. Take, move your mouse, let me see. Yes. So you see the server name, I mean the name where DBA plus, there is a plus sign there. Click there. So it tells you that is a cluster. This is the IP address of that cluster, right? This is the IP address of that cluster. And you can actually ping this server and the, this cluster and this IP address the same as you do for a normal computer, right? You ping it the same way you do for a normal computer. Co open up your command prompt. Open up your CMD and try to ping that cluster. So at times, if you are working as a database administrator, you have a always on a traditional failover cluster set up and people cannot connect or resources cannot connect to that server, you still troubleshoot it normally as if it was an actual computer. You should be able to ping your server to see if it is online or not. So open up your CMD there, ping that server, the, that cluster to see. That's just to test communication, to make sure that, okay, this server is up. Because they call you that, hey, these databases are not online. What is happening? You should be able to, first of all, validate if that was an always on or a traditional failover cluster, uh, the first one, uh, run command. So type in ping. Space, I put space, I put in the cluster IP address. Click on enter. So you see that cluster is the, is the same like an IP address. It's just like a logical, uh, it's just a logical name, right? It's an object in Active Directory. So if you go now to your DC, go to Active Directory, you should be able to see that cluster there like a computer. Go to your domain controller. 
you have to minimize this one and go to domain control. So log with your cluster admin. Is that account correct? The cluster admin. Is that the account that? Uh, is that how you wrote it? If so, login. And your documentation. Everything that you're doing this part, you should have documented it. These are the users that you have created. These are the groups that you have created, and uh, probably these are the passwords. So you know that this is what you have done so far, right? Uh, Brian, yes, please. I, I often hear this this thing called documentation in the in the company as a SQL, as a DBA. Is this what you mean by documentation? Like just taking notes of all your actions? It's, yeah, you need to take take oh notes. Oh my gosh, we, we are so heavy on documentation. I'm, my job, it's like everything you do, you have to put the steps that you did and save it on a shared folder. Yeah, so that when so I'm that if there's part, any other problem that we have, you know, you can always go back and repair. When I'm insisting in class that if we should document all what we do, it's not just because I want you to write, it's something that you do at your job on a daily basis. Yes. Everything that you do, document it that this is what I did, this is how I did it, this yes. is how I did, I did it, and it will help you a lot. We are really heavy. If you don't document the stuff, oh my God, my senior DBA is, uh, even today, there was one, one, one service request I worked on, I think last, last Friday. Today he found out I didn't document it. Like, hey, can you just document it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's all right. So go ahead and uh, from here, right? This is your, so you go to your Active Directory and verify to see that you are, cluster was created in Active Directory as an object. It's just gonna take some time. So click on uh, expand, click on the arrow next to your Kiawi tech. Click on computers. So if on computers now you see that you have an actual it is there like a computer, right? It tells you the failover cluster. Yeah, that's a virtual, uh, the virtual name of the failover cluster that you have set up. So it tells you there. So I just wanted you all to see that. So go back to your prod. And now uh, here, do you have failover cluster manager here? Just minimize this. You might need Active Directory again. Just minimize that. Uh, go to tools again and open up. Uh, see if you have, you added a future here. Yeah, you, ha you added it. So open up all of our cluster manager. Because it is the same like a computer, it has an IP address, you can still connect to that cluster manager on any location, on any VM. The fact that you created it on prod does not mean that it is safe in the prod, right? It has a name that is in the network. So you can connect to that cluster from here. So click on connect Wait, to the cluster. Where did she click again to, to, to see if the cluster is on the Active Directory? Uses on the Computers. On you said computers. Yes. Okay, I'm already there, but I don't see it. No, if you are there, you, uh -huh. if you expand the Kiawi tech, yes. click on that arrow, you will see computers. Computers. And there it is. I had a old, so should I delete the old one? Yes, you can delete the old one. That's what Foster was saying. You can delete uh -huh. that one from there. So okay. now you can connect to this cluster. You know the cluster name, right? It is in your network, just like a computer. So type in the cluster name. I've told you all that uh, names are not case sensitive. I don't know why you always want to type in them with case sensitivity. You see, so you should be able to connect to that cluster everywhere to test. Let me say they call you, oh, this server, we are not able to get to these nodes and you know that in the cluster, you can connect everywhere as long as you have the cluster name and this and uh, 
the IP address. So now let us walk through this uh, some more. Click on the, the arrow next to the cluster, uh, database cluster. So click on the, the rows over there. So it tells you if you, this is just a blind cluster that we have built. It's the two computers now, they are the same, right? The two computers, they look at each other and they can fail over from one to another if we put in any role there. So by the time we set up always on and create an availability group, when you come here, you will see that, okay, there is one role that has been added to this cluster. It goes this way. When we install this server, we do not add Active Directory, we do not add Telva cluster. It was just like a blind box, right? When we added those things, it started making sense now to you. Now we have this cluster. It's just a blind cluster. We have not defined any roles that this cluster is supposed to play. And I told you that SQL is, cl in a, is a cluster-aware application where you can set it up. It will know that, okay, I am in a cluster right now. When you come here, you will see the role over there, right? And then click on Note. When you click on note, you look look at here, it tells you how your DC it is up, your prod is up. What happens if you turn off your prod? Right now, if you shut it down, when you come here, it will tell you that prod is down. Again, these are still independent computers. If you shut down your prod, prod is shut down. It, it, it is just gonna affect the cluster now because you have just a two node cluster. When you look at the status here, it tells you up and down, right? You look at the assign vote. So all of these two, they have one vote each. Remember, we talked about the quorum. All of them have one vote each. So a total of two votes, right? So now, the current vote, it means that the resources now are being hosted by their own, D, their own DR, right? So PROT now has just one vote. So what will happen if one of these nodes goes down? There is no majority now. There is a majority now because, okay, it's zero and, it's zero and one, right? But what happens if one of these nodes just go down. What will happen? You have just one node in that cluster, meaning there is no majority. And at that point, the cluster will go down. So our goal here is to eliminate this failure. And to eliminate this, we need to create what we call either a file share weakness or a disk quorum weakness, or we create um, uh, a web. You know there is Azure now where you can create uh, a web. How do you call it faster? Cloud share. Cloud share witness, right? Yeah. So you can create this theory witness. That way you see that you have another witness here that will have one vote. And if one of these nodes go down, the other node and that witness will still count. There will still be a majority of nodes. So that is what I wanted you to understand over here. So if you go on that, so if you want to add a node in a cluster now, let's say- you Sorry, can you just repeat that explanation? I, I don't think I understood that. What didn't you understand? the witness okay look at this we have a sign vote right all of these nodes in this cluster they have one vote and for a cluster to be up a majority you need to have a majority you need to have a quorum for this cluster to be up in a meeting let me say we have three of us in a meeting and we said that for any decision to be valid in this meeting we need at least two people right to vote for that decision so what happens if if one person leaves Right. If I if I leave, we are three of us. If I leave, okay, the two of you can still vote. Both of you can vote. That okay, this is two, right? Even though the third person refused to vote, but we still have a majority. We are two of us. Now, what happens if I'm not the one person? If one person leaves again, you are left by yourself. At that point, no decision can be made because you are the only one voting. The same thing that is here. We have two nodes. All of them have one vote each. At this point, what the node that is actually hosting the resources. It, it has zero vote, meaning, the, but the prod, which is the the other node there, it has said, okay, take my vote, right? You see, see, it's a zero and one. So there's a majority here. There's a majority here. That is why this cluster is up and running because there is a majority. There are two of them and one of them have given his vote to the other one. So you are good. That is why this guy is having zero. It has given this vote to this guy. Assigned vote is one. Uh, current vote is one for the prod. If you look at DC, assigned vote is one, current vote is zero. So this prod still have what we call the majority, it has two votes, again, itself and that vote that is coming from the DC. That is why it is up. So what happened now if you are D, I mean your D arrow, what happened now if your D arrow completely goes down? It means you only have but one vote, 
right? Prod will only be prod by himself, and a single node cannot make up a cluster. That way, the cluster is going to die down. Now we need to look for a way, rather than adding a third node here, if we had three nodes, we will not bother about the file share or the, the quorum, because we know if one goes down, the two can still run, right? But we don't want to just buy a new server, build a new server, because we want to have a quorum. That is why... Oh, Brian. You... Yes. Uh, I just wanted to know, how do you decide which one is hosting the, the resources? Because I... Uh... Remember, yeah. we created everything using prod. So you're saying DR is hosting the no, resources. Prod. prod is hosting. You see, prod is having one on one. DR okay. gave up his vote. So I will show you. I will show you that. So now we were looking for we are at a way to create a file share or a Dix witness that will come in here and act or pretend to be another node that will have one vote in this cluster. So that way, if one goes down, one will still be up. And you see, use the vote from the file share that we have created. That is what I want us to do. Uh, that is what we're going to be doing next. So, uh, just walking you through that. If you click on a storage, click on storage to your left. So, so the 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 witness or the vote is a determining factor that will say prod is now going to be the one that's going to take all the resources. Yes, because you need a majority. You need an odd number. You need a you don't you need at least right a majority of the votes to be online. You need at least a majority of you people to make a decision. If you are mm -hmm. by yourself, you cannot make a decision. And 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 if there's no decision made, then it goes down or the quorum is down. Yes, the quorum is down. And then that means that one alone cannot make cannot be a cluster. Exactly. So you okay. cannot have a one cluster, a one node cluster. You cannot have that, right? So yeah. uh, click on network. So the storage just tells you this. If it was a shared storage that we created this cluster on, you'll see it. So when you go to the network, you see here the cluster. This is a cluster network that we have. It is up, cluster and client. That is, that is what it is, the network. But for the most part, uh, at times, you have two nodes that are in two different subnet right that is something i also look at you have two nodes that are in two different subnets so you are making now a you are setting up what, what is called geo clustering because they are in G one is in let me say cameroon the other one is in europe those are two different subnets but you still need to look for a way for them to combine those subnets to work together that is one of the things that dbs will, will always run into issues when it comes to that but the good thing is not our responsibility to set up uh the cluster you just need to tell your system and mean guys i need a two node cluster blah 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 this this and that right and they'll build it for you you just go there install your sql but it's good for you to know this because you actually talk to them all right so uh click on the database cluster itself let me show you some other stuff so generally when you look at the summary of the database cluster right database uh, cluster has zero cluster rows and two nodes it tells you that the name is this right uh, the current oh, okay. what was that uh, So the current host actually yeah the, the current host is d is dr i don't know how that was determined but the current host show is dr uh, the ipv4 the network name blah 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 all that stuff so let me see click on more action to the left i mean to your right click on more action let me let me see more action so uh move go to move uh core cluster resources i want to make the prod to be the primary node so click on a uh, select node so yeah, so now see you have just two, one is already, up one is already DR, so by default it's just prod. So if you want to fill over resources, now click on prod, click on okay, and I'll explain this. So you see, if you look at the network, it's going offline, right? You see the network is going offline, boom, it comes back online. If you look at here now, if you just refresh, uh, if you just refresh to your right, there's a refresh option there. No, not there, not there. You are refreshing server manager. Minimize back server manager and bring up your cluster. You don't need server manager. Um, Brian, my home server is prod. 
Uh, are we on the same? Now what? My host server is according to what I have. We are in prod. You have to go in this. Thing. I don't understand. Hold on. What are you doing? So I was just telling you, I've talked about moving resources. So right now it tells you the current host server on the top here. Go to the top there. The current host server is prod, right? Yeah. And the practical example where, uh, where, where I'm saying this is, we have two node cluster. What is the reason of a cluster? To minimize downtime, increase productivity and stuff like that. So let me say with this, our two node cluster, the resources now are prod. I know that applications are connected and they are being routed to this prod server. Let me say I was trying to do an upgrade or, or do some patching on the servers. What will happen is now that the primary, which is the prod, is up and running, applications are connected to it. If I go now and I do a patch on my DR, right? If I do a patch on my DR, blah, 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 everything, it is good. And I want to fail over. I don't want applications to go down because they are connected to a cluster. Applications are connected using this cluster name on the bottom and the IP address. It will always it will always route them to the primary, right? You always route them to the primary. So what will happen is if I finish with my DR now, and I will come here and I will fill over my resources. So you go again to more option. Let's say we are done with DR. We want to fill over our resources to prod. You go to move core cluster resources. Uh, select node. So you see one node available, then you can fail over your resources to now. So select the DR. So you are failing over your resources. If you, if you had any role that I always on, once you fail over your resources, everything is going to be on that node. Then you can go ahead and click on OK. You can go ahead and work on your prod as more as long as you as as much as you can, right? So that is just telling you that resources can fill over from one computer to another without affecting applications because the applications all they know is the cluster name and the IP address, right? It depends on the technology that you that you are setting up. That is one thing that you need to know. Again, this is just a win. This is for the on the Windows part. When you set up always on, it's gonna come with its own technology and what you configure there. The fail over in in always on is different because you don't fail over the instance, you fail over just databases. The fail over in traditional fail over clustering is different because the instance, including all the databases, fails over. But you all will understand these things when we start going. This is just a general review for you to see that, okay, this is a two node cluster, and if applications are connected here or whatsoever, I can fail from A to B, right? So, Brian. Yes. So to build a cluster, it only needs to be a database or an instance that ha that is similar to another one, correct? Like I for example, pro I'm not sure if I'm if if I was clear. Say that again. I don't think I understand. Okay. So. Prod needs to look like disaster recovery in order, in order for, for me to build a cluster. When you because say look what, like, you talk in terms of what? In, in terms of everything, like, okay, so because now I'm thinking all the connections are going to Prod, how's the network like? Because I thought, like, if, how are the logs being distributed? Like, like you, you know, when you say, only prod is taking up the resources. Now I'm thinking like any changes that are being made on the database, it, it, it's only applying to prod. Now, what about the disaster recovery database? Where, when are those changes going okay. to be applied there? So what I will tell you again, this is just the Windows cluster. When you install the application that you want to make use of this cluster, you'll have a proper understanding. Because if let us say we're gonna use this cluster for our always on, right? We're gonna use this cluster for our always on. At every point, the database are gonna be synchronized on both the primary and the secondary. The database are gonna be synchronized on both of those both of those nodes. So if you fail over from prod, it goes over to DR. To DR is the same thing. Fail from DR, it goes over to prod. Is the same thing. But that is in the application itself. It's not at this level. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, like I said, this is just a cluster that we have built. We have not added, we have not defined the functionality of this cluster. What would this cluster be doing? We have not defined that at all. 
we only define that when we install when we set up our always on and you'll be able to come on the rows there you'll see that okay there's an always on row here and this is how always on works that is when you understand it but if you want don't look at understanding that always on at this level you will not it will not work right okay so when we set up always on we start filling over and stuff like that you will really get an understanding of it uh, so what do we do now if you look at here right recent cluster events known a weakness there is no weakness there yet because so if one node goes down the entire cluster is going to go down so we want to add a weakness right to make up that quorum we want to add a weakness here so that at least in addition to the prod on the gro we have our weakness so that is what we want to do now right and yet do i change the host back to prod or just leave it, it to dr it doesn't matter it can be prod dr you should not really that one should not really be an issue for now yeah. yeah so now everybody if you are connected to your cluster let us create we need to create a file share right we need to create a file share so to do that let us go to our dc and we create a cluster witness right go to your dc create a folder on your c drive called cluster witness share that folder and give access to this cluster they will come back here and create the witness so go to your dc everybody uh, go to your dc and are you with us go to your c drive on your dc Everybody create a folder on your, that's your DC there, just maximize it. That's not your DC, this is your prod, bring up your DC. Emma, are you with us? Yes, sir. All right. So close out of this field over close the, this server manager, you don't need it right now. All right, so that is fine. Just leave it, leave that one there, open up Fire Explorer. So on your C drive, create a folder called for, open that up, double click that. That's your C drive, double click it, create a folder there. The folder should be, uh, how should we call it? Cluster witness. Yes, call it cluster witness. Witness is not having the H there, so it's just a W I T N E W S. At times, I just hate capital letters. It just when I see them, it just it's as if you are yelling at me. Um, Brian, the reason why we're creating this folder and we're trying to do the um the file share is just because we have two nodes. Yes, and I'll ex I'll explain that to you. So. Is because you have two nodes, right? And at times, even if you have three nodes or four nodes, is there is nothing wrong in adding an additional thing there just in case because the, the, the file share will not cause anything. So if you have two, if you have two nodes, right, and you add a file share, it looks now like three, meaning that two of these one node can go down, then the other one will still work, right? But if you have four nodes. It means that two nodes can go down and the cluster will still be up. But if you just add a file share now, it will mean that one uh, up to four, up to three nodes can go down, but the cluster will still be up. Whereas if you don't have a file share, it means that only two nodes will go down. I mean, I'll explain that when we get there. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, so, is there, is there a possibility the cluster, the the weakness itself can go down? <laughs> Definitely, because right now we are having the witness. If we create the witness on our DC and the DC goes down, what happened? So the witness and the DC itself have gone down, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's a possibility. So you have to share this file share. You have to share the cluster witness. Right click on it and share it. Properties, you need to go to properties. Sharing, 
share it. Uh, click on share. I want to create, I want us to generate an issue, then we'll come back and solve the solve the problem. Click on done. So just understand that part. Backslash, backslash this. So everybody, you have shared it, right? Have we created a, the cluster witness folder? Yes. All right. Uh, who are those? Some people. Is anybody lost? Nelly, are you with us? Um, Brian. Yes. On her computer, I saw just one um, one group for the sharing. Mine between administrators and administrator. So I don't know why. So you, you logged in. Who are you logged in as? Are you, are you logged in as administrator or are you logged in as? Cluster and main, I think. Are you sure? Who is logged in with uh what is that name? I'm seeing a name they call Xperia 10 Plus. Who is that? Silver. Okay. So now that you have that shared, right? Go to your bring up your cluster. I don't care if you can connect to your cluster on your DC or wherever if you don't want to be going back and forth. So you have your cluster, then click on your cluster, your cluster manager, uh your fellow cluster manager. So to create to create a witness, all you need to do you go to more actions to the right. Excuse me, Brian. Is this on a DC or? Pro? I missed something there. So she was sharing. Who who did she share the the network file with? To the cluster admin account yeah. or? She'll share with anybody that appeared there. I'm create. We'll create. We'll generate an error. And then we'll go ahead and resolve it. Okay. So just share, just share the folder with whosoever appears there. Oh yes, check our question. Yes, sir. I was wondering whether we were on a, a prod or DR. Where are we working on? Where did you create the folder? On DC. Yes. So if you create a folder on DC, that is fine. Connect to your cluster. If you if you have your cluster, you can connect on your cluster. If you're on your DC or your prod or wheresoever, but as long as a file share is created on DC, that is fine. Okay, so bring up your cluster. All I need you to, where I need you to be is where you have cluster, uh, fellow cluster manager. Ryan, I still have a question. Yes, Martha. So on the um, the file share, means I have to, my DC, my DC has to be locked in with the cluster. Um, no, it doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter. Just create the folder share it with whosoever mm -hmm. you have it there i'm going to create okay. the problem and we'll resolve it okay <laughs> all right so if you have your folder created and shared then uh, you go if you come back if you go to your cluster manager you see uh more actions to your right Who is not there? Mm. No, my your, your cluster finished creating. You didn't have that issue again, right? No, I did not. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So once you are here, more actually click on configure cluster quorum setting. All right. So it's just telling you these wizard guys you through configuring the quorum of your fellow cluster. The relevant cluster elements are the nodes and in some quorum configuration, a DIX witness or a file share witness. So we are creating, what we are doing is a file share witness, right? Not a disk witness. If we had a spare disk on the drive C, I mean on a, our DC, we could use that one as well to create a DIX witness. But at the same time, it says the same thing, right? The quorum configuration affects the availability of your cluster. A sufficient number of cluster elements must be online in in or oh, must be online or the cluster loses the quorum, right? And must stop running. Note that uh, note that the full function of a cluster depends only on the quorum. So you need to have a quorum, like I said, you need to have a quorum in order for the for the cluster to function. And a quorum is at least two, right? You cannot have one quorum or a quorum of one one node. You must have a quorum of at least two nodes. All right, so click on next.
So it tells you here, what type of quorum do you want, right? So you have a use default quorum configuration, select a quorum witness, right? Or advanced quorum configuration. So this one, we're just gonna select a quorum witness because we have that our file share. So select the quorum witness, that's the second option. Okay, click on next. So now it tells you, uh, what do you want? Uh, configure a file share witness or configure it. The first one is a DIX witness, the second one is a file share, the third one is a cloud witness, and the other one is do not configure a witness. So which one are we doing? File share. Okay, click on file share, click on next. So it gives you the path. What is that path? Type in that file share path, the network path. Mm. Remember I told you backslash backslash, the computer name where the file share is located at, then the folder name. DC. What was the name of that folder you created? It was network share. No, I don't think what, so. What BC was Cluster. Oh, the one I just created right now. Yeah, so it's oh. um, backslash, backslash, DC. Cluster witness. Yeah, backslash, cluster witness. You can also browse to that location from there. You can browse from, from this, from here and get to the location and pick it up. Yeah, you can do that. You can still go back and copy it and paste it. So yeah. you website. have to provide the name of the server, which is the DC. So if you type in DC there, type in DC and type in browse. And then it will show you all your shares. Mm, let me see. Yeah, type in a with cluster. Just click on check name. Let me see. Nope. Yeah, you need to close out of that. It's checking for computer. So click on show folders. So let's see. Click on show share folders. The ones yeah. that you've created will show you. Yeah. yeah. And you pick up the you one. Yeah. Pick another one. You click on next. So uh, click on next, it's just telling you, I know it's gonna fail because we did not give permission. So read that error message, what, what it says. Read the error message. An error was encountered while modifying the quorum settings. Your cluster quorum settings have not been ch changed. Okay, go down. What does it say? Complete the error. There was unable to save huh? property changes for file share witness, right? Uh, screw down again, all, all the way down. I want to see what it will tell you. But the issue here is that that folder does not have a, uh, the cluster itself, remember it's a computer object. It needs to be able to make changes on the file that you have just created, that you have just shared. So you need to share that file with the cluster with a database cluster, right? And give it full permission to use that file as a, as a witness. So click on finish here. So go back to the folder that you shared. Okay, right click on it and give permission to that cluster. So click on uh, security, you can go to security. You go to edit, uh, click on database cluster, let me see. Click there. Okay, see database cluster is there, but it does not have full permission. So give it full permission, apply and okay. Close. So go now and create your file share witness. Yeah. When I click on database cluster, 
does it does not allow me to click on full control or this i don't know what does it say i don't see the, the square the, the square hold on let me see what happens here okay. bingo you see click on finish it has finished creating that uh, if you look at there now you see the witness you see that there is a file share witness and the file share location is dc blah 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 right so click now on your note click on your, uh, the notes to the left okay you see now that all of this right that you see the old, earlier there was a zero somewhere here right you see now that all of these guys they are still up so if one of these goes down again the, the, the other node will still be able to come online because of that file share right that zero is no more so these guys now all of them they have one one vote even though the one dr is up dr is the one hosting the resources there is still one vote somewhere which is a file share witness so uh that is how you might not understand any of these things now so even if you turn off your prod now this cluster will still be up if you turn off your prod shut down your prod this cluster is still going to be up but if without a file share witness if you shut down your prod then the cluster is going to be off the cluster is not going to be on because you cannot have a one a cluster of one node right okay share your screen let us see this is a complete uh, foster can tell you all this uh, this is exactly how our environment looks like she might have multiple nodes but this is exactly what her environment looks like and she has always on that she works on i don't think uh she's the one first i you know, i will set this up or it was already there it was already there yeah so but now with her understanding she can troubleshoot now with, with just this you can troubleshoot issues that are not even your dba issues you can go and look the cluster even tell the GBAs what to i mean the sys admin guys what to do you know so who was having issues bring up your screen thank I you was having for issues, sharing but for some reason i unplugged my computer my mistake oh my gosh i'm so tired you did what unplugged my computer oh sorry about yeah. that yeah yeah and i have to be up to monitor the registration 6 30 oh my gosh <laughs> mm. okay so nelly where are you mm, no i was able to fix the issue i have but i did not do what margaret margaret did last so, so yeah, my issue is is the is the file share are you having the same issue as well for my some question. reason it's not picking up the 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 path that i use okay one moment you share your screen let me see so click on next did you give permission to that cluster account yes i did okay so select a quorum set a witness go to next configure that one next um, and just browse use a short route but for now you both should learn to understand the typing because you should know when you see a backslash backslash it's okay type in dc there Type in DC and select that share folder. Click on show share folders. Select the, yeah. Click on OK. Click on next. Uh, next. Finish. Yeah, so you have your witness. Yes, your cluster is configured now with everything. Click on finish. Uh, name and share your screen, let me see. I'm still bringing up my my desktop. Okay. Uh, who who else is having issues with creating this file yeah, share? Please, can I share my screen? Uh, yes, please. All right, sir. Oh. Please, I'm having issue as well. So, I have an issue here. What do you need to do to the cluster share? The, the you need to give it full control. Click on the database cluster. Click on database cluster. Yeah. So give full control you see it does not have permission to make any changes on that file share that is why you have to give it full control then once you do that apply when you see apply there is always a reason so click on apply click on ok close it and then go ahead and create your file share now who else was having issues i'm having issues i just wanted you all to see how important permissions are 
right? You need to give the appropriate permissions to anybody. So to create the file, the witness here, you know where to go, right? Click on more actions. I'm having issues as well. Yes, I know. Click on configure cluster settings, go to next. Everybody look at this one. When you have correct your issue, you need to come and do this. So click on next. The file share witness. And then you can type in the path. Yeah, DC backslash cluster witness, if that is what you typed in. Do you type in cluster share? Yeah, that's why that's the name of the database. The is, folder. is that the name of the folder? Yeah, what I'm creating, yes, sir. I put because okay, but we let us try to be to be uniform. You see, you have thrown me away now. I said the folder should be cluster cluster witness, but that is fine. Just click on next. Okay. Fin uh, next. Finish. Yes. It's done? Yes. So if you look there under the witness, you'll see that there's a file share witness there on the top where you have the summary. Top left. In here where you have the cluster name, the current host, the all of that below that you see the file share witness so your okay. cluster is okay all right uh who else stop sharing Shola. i think i'm having an issue at the permission stage okay so click on art click on art then now you since you're adding but a computer object if you type it there it will not come so you need to click on object type to the top click on object type there make sure you select computer as well because that cluster is there as a computer okay. object so check that box click on okay then type in now the the cluster name just check name you can start typing and just check name you'll get it you don't need to bother typing everything that is not a cluster name. I said type in the cluster name. What is the name of your cluster? Hold on, you are still good. Don't close it. Okay. So just type in the cluster name there. It's a database cluster. It's not cluster witness. Because you are trying to give uh, that cluster permissions to that folder. Okay. So it's database cluster. Delete, delete what you have typed there, Mommy Sola, and type in the name of your cluster. All right. We're going okay. Then you give it full permission. Okay. We're going apply and click on okay. We're going apply. Click on okay. Click on a uh, security. I want to see something. Don't close it. Click on the D uh, database cluster. Okay, so click on, why is it coming that way? Uh, click on uh, edit. Click on database cluster. Check, uh, give full permission. Apply and okay. So go, go now and create the, the file share witness. So these key points, you just need to note them and do some research. What is a cluster? What is a witness? And then try to summarize all what we have done in this class today chronologically. It will really help you. Mom, just delete that. Delete that, just type GC and just type GC. You click on show folder. Click on next. Next. Finish. That should create a witness for you. 
So you should be able to, today, just today should be enough for you to have at least six points on your resume, right? Your resume is not only gonna be about SQL, it's gonna be about this. You're able to build up a, to, uh, build up a cluster, configure file share witness, uh, fill over resources from one node to another. You should have that just up somewhere and the steps on how to do it. Okay, okay. who else? Yes, can I share our screen? If you have it, you should share your screen. Um, okay. Brian, where do we create the the, the file share on uh, on the the on DC? Okay, on DC on your C drive on DC. Okay. Yes, Chica, what is your problem? I am actually wondering where how to continue from here. I just want to uh, I'll finish them adding the permission. I just want to finish them. Okay, let's just let me just take some time now to just play with you a little bit, right? What does it say? Read what it says. Eh? Okay, so please select the file share that will be used by the file share witness resource. This file share must not be hosted by this cluster. It can be made more available by hosting it on another cluster. Okay. What next? Uh, I think I'll click on browse. So read, no, read, read uh, before you click on browse. What is written below there? Before you wait, it's telling you to type something. What is written there? Do you see, what do they want you to type? That is what I'm asking. What do they want you to type? Okay, five pass, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. So just read it and you know, do you know the five part? Uh, yeah. Okay, if you know the five part, you type it. If you don't know it, you browse to where you can search it. Okay, Capital letters don't really matter. I've told you all in class, don't really, when it comes to the names, just, just put it, capital letters, they don't really matter. Click on next. If that is what is if it's correct, you'll see. Click on next. Click on finish. Do you see, do you, do you see it? Do you see the file share witness that you have created? No. Do you know where to look for it? No, I don't. Take your look all the way up. Uh, pull this thing all the way up under the summary. You see current host server here, DR. Do you see the name there? On the top, go up yeah. right there. So that is the information about your cluster. You okay. have the name. Okay. All right. So that's your file. That's your file. So go to your notes. Let me see. Let me see what are the notes that you have on this server. Where do you see the uh, notes on the server? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Click there. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, All right. so oh. sorry, sir. Uh, can I ask you a little question, please? Yes. I, I know that actually this was zero before. So I think it changed to one because of the, the file share that I did right now, right? Yes, because the file share has one vote as well. So you have now three votes in this cluster. Okay. Yeah. So if I and didn't do the file sharing, it wouldn't have shown one. It wouldn't have shown this uh, one here. If you did not do the file share, it would have been the way it was earlier. But if one of any, if one node fails or if one node is off, oh, your entire yeah. cluster will be off. So right now, with the file share, if one of these nodes go down, the file share will still be able to support the other node to host the cluster, even though one node is down. So that is the important, and that is why we created a file share. So, so you can, okay. you can try that. Turn off your turn off your prod. You can go ahead and shut down your prod. No, no, that, don't shut down this way. You will get your computer into issues. If you want to shut down a server, use the appropriate way to turn off a server. You go to Windows on the bottom left. You click there. And then you turn it off. So it shut down this server. Go 
then go, you can go back to your DR or any computer to see if your cluster is still going to be up. Cluster admin. Who else is having issues with the cluster? I can stop recording right things. Uh, um, I am almost there. I'm just I'm trying, just to, trying to, on, uh, to, um, to add the, the witness. And I'm not sure. I kind of received an error. Can I share my screen? Hold on. Let me let him. Uh, I just want to confirm something here. Um, so did you create a folder? Yeah, I did. I, I gave did, all, all. Did you share the folder and give permissions to the cluster? I believe I did. But let me just connect here something. Ah, what is it? Okay, uh, I I hope. Okay, so Emmanuel, we are on the same page, right? Chica is good. Uh, Emmanuel, you are good. Yes. Uh, Nelly, Nelly is good. Ada, are you in class? She's not. Okay. Uh, Seal, I know it's Seal, but I'm good. Are you, are you okay? So you have created your cluster. You have created a file share. Yes. All right. So what you are seeing here, when you turn off a computer, right, and it comes back up, you might just have this event tracker telling you uh, why did you turn off your computer. So just click on comment and type in anything there. You might be on a say plan. Click on comment in there. You see comment. This field okay. is required for reasons you select. Just type in any letter, one. Just put one or A or B. And then click on OK to get rid of that box. So bring up, connect your cluster. So to connect your cluster, that is good. You go there, you go to your fellow cluster manager. Okay, so you see a cluster there. So uh, you can click on the left on the cluster when it comes up. So click there. Uh, you can go to the notes. To, don't do it that way. Uh, see on that cluster, click on the arrow next to it. I want you to be able to browse and play with that. Where you see the database cluster, where you were earlier, to your top left. There's an arrow to your top left. There's an arrow there, yeah, right there. Click there and then click on notes. Okay. Uh, click on refresh to the right. Let me see. Your prod is back up. Uh, don't forget to stop recording. Yeah, my, my, my prod is. No, my prod is off. But I say you should turn it, that you should turn it off. That's. Oh, yeah, it's, still, it's, still, it's still shutting oh. down. Let's see. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I think so. Brian, okay. please, can you stop recording? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. This should have been recorded. So now when you turn off your server, you see that uh, then you turn off prod, but the, your cluster is still up, but it tells you that the, the server prod is shut down. That node is down, but your cluster is still up because of the file share witness. If the file share witness go down now, everything the cluster will go down. Okay. Is that the is that the work of the uh, quorum? Exactly, that is the work of the quorum because right now, even though this node is down, right, the quorum now is still helping the DR. As so, the quorum is counting itself as one vote. The DR is counting itself as another vote. So the two of them are still up, and that is why the quorum, the cluster is still up. If we do not have the if we do not have the cluster witness right or the file share witness what will happen is if this node is down then you are left just with dr nothing is going to support dr to be up dr by default the cluster by default will automatically goes down so the work now of the file share is to make sure that it count me as one vote 
Even if one of you guys are down, I am still here to support the other person. That is why the fire share witness is doing. If the fire share witness was not there, any of these notes go down, the entire cluster will go down. Uh, Brian. Yes. Yes, we, we started